ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the q2 fy24 earnings conference call of jain irrigation systems limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr karan kamdar from di choksi fins of private limited thank you and over to you uh, thank you for that good evening everyone festive greetings welcome to the jain education systems limited earnings call to discuss the q2 fy24 results today we have on call mr anil jain chief executive officer and managing director mr bitin walme chief financial officer we must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward looking statements that may involve known and unknown risk uncertainties and other factors must and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces future results performance or achievement may differ significantly from what is expressed and implied by such forward looking statements please note the results and presentations are available on the exchange and our company's website also and now request mr anil jain to take us to the company's business outlook and financial highlights subsequent to which we will open the floor for a q and a thank you and over to you sir uh thank you uh, good evening everybody and happy dhanteras happy diwali uh today uh, hopefully i'll try and keep my you know when i speak a little bit short you know considering the last time in terms of the evening and the diwali which is there so uh, friends and uh, all shareholders and analysts and media uh, you know we just uh, published our results yesterday uh, we had a very good quarter uh, you know revenues uh, in india are up 33% uh, you know in a usually a weak quarter and if you know the way i see it uh, you know our revenues uh, have panned out quite well across uh, different business segments and earnings were even higher than the revenue growth almost by about 45% uh, so that augurs very well for the you know entire fiscal year result and even if we look at consol revenue which is apart from the main business in india the food business which is in our subsidiary as well as the overseas the plastic business combined together Uh, still has uh, rose about 26% in the second quarter and for the whole year for the first half of the year it has been about 22.6% and ebitda is up about 56% uh, and so when you look at all these numbers uh, the growth looks uh, quite promising and most of this growth has actually come from the retail business the business where we sell to uh, you know dealers Uh, and as you know we have talked about earlier that we are slowly winding down the projects so the actual revenue coming from projects is lesser now than the earlier period so if i really look at the retail uh, business where we sell to the dealers to the farmer more on cash and carry model so in uh, micro irrigation if i look at retail uh, you know we had almost about 47% growth uh, which is huge uh in um, piping uh, it was about 40% which is also uh, quite high so that way we see this momentum uh, continuing going forward uh, more focus on dealers uh, in existing areas in new areas and uh, more focus on cash and carry model which would continue to help us to reduce the working capital footprint and improve the roc so that is what we are seeing in terms of underlying business and if i look at you know different uh, segment so let's say uh, high tech uh, business and uh, plastic uh, business overall high tech business this quarter grew about 19% uh, and that included the drip and uh, uh, tissue culture and there as i said overall actually dealer growth is uh, 47 so 18.8 uh, looks low uh, it is because of negative growth in the project business but um, where we want to focus the growth is where uh, we want it to be and it is quite robust 
and a plastic business uh, actually is at 67.5 percent even though within plastic business also uh, there is a project uh, portion even though smaller and that was reduced by about 48 percent but um, despite that overall plastic business is actually 67.5 percent because institutional business of Jal Jeevan Mission uh, has been doing uh, quite well uh, apart from the retail business with uh, farmers uh, being serviced through the uh, dealers. So all in all, uh, you know, significantly high growth uh, across uh, different businesses. Uh, this is more about the standalone uh, India business. But even if I look at on the console side, uh, when I look at agro processing, uh, you know, business um, overall has grown about 15%. Uh, so that's nice uh, for that uh, that type of the business. And EBITDA actually there has um, grown about 42%. So again, good revenue growth and uh, you want a higher uh, growth on uh, EBITDA numbers. Uh, plastics uh, in India as well as outside uh, is doing well. And uh, I think it would remain so uh, for the remainder of the year and moving forward uh, next couple of years. Now, as you know, I talked about the revenue growth and uh, profitability. Uh, both have shown very good outcomes. Uh, even in terms of when you know, look at the cash flow, I think the net cash uh, which was generated uh, from the operating activities, post working capital changes uh, for the you know first half has been about 229 crores, and uh, console basis. Uh, it's about at 250 crores. So, and in fact, before working capital changes, operating profit is uh, 400 crores on console basis. So, those numbers on cash flow post working capital also uh, look good, and that should help us sustain the you know the growth rate uh, going forward. Now, generally speaking, uh, you know we have a second quarter, which is June to September, is a weaker quarter because of seasonality and the rains. But uh, so typically we end up about 40% of overall revenue in the first half and 60% in the second half. And usually one third of EBITDA kind of 35% uh, EBITDA comes in the first half and uh, remainder of EBITDA comes in the second half. Uh, that's how uh, it plays. So based on the numbers which we already achieved in first half, we are fairly confident to maintain a high growth rate on revenue as well as a higher growth rate uh, further on the uh, earning side uh, through uh, EBITDA. Our company has been uh, working hard to manage this kind of growth uh, without any additional borrowing. And in the second half, especially as you know, a lot of inventory gets sold and cash comes into hand, uh, you, we would be able to use that uh, to further actually reduce the debt despite uh, this kind of a growth uh, in the revenue in the business. And in terms of, you know, negative things or the risk issues or whatever, you know, geopolitical events worldwide are there for sure. Oil prices did go up and that impacts the polymer prices. Uh, so lots of issues are happening in you know market. In a sense, the polymer price prices are a little bit volatile. They go up and they go down every two weeks, uh, and things are uncertain. But I think with whatever strategy, uh, you know, we are going to the market to our dealers, uh, to our customers, to the farmers. Our pricing policy is helping us to maintain the level of margins which we had uh, budgeted for, and. Um, Despite all this volatility, we are able to deliver uh, on those margins uh, on a consistent basis now for last few quarters, and especially uh, in the current year, in the uh, first two quarters. So this is where uh, we are as a company right now. Uh, in terms of the second half, uh, whatever our discussions with our dealer base is, uh, uh, they are quite encouraged. Uh, they are looking at a good season uh, going forward. 
there were in some pockets there are issues due to patchy rain rainfall uh, part of maharashtra really suffered a lot uh, some of the farmers lost money because their crop got spoiled and but there are some other areas where you know you are doing better so overall there is that compensation which is taking place or balancing which is taking place uh, despite the patchy rainfall i think uh, we are not changing our overall outlook for the current year in terms of the uh, business opportunity and in terms of our ability to uh, execute on uh, that business uh, opportunity uh, which is uh, there now um, i think in terms of inventory and receivables uh, i think as i said our overall working capital cycle uh, we are bringing it down uh, and if you read through some of our uh, investor presentation which we have shown uh, in india especially where things are really high uh, you know inventory is coming down last year same period it was 108 days now it is about 84 days uh and overall net working capital last year was about 300 days and now it is down to 213 days so significant improvement and even compared to the last quarter of june uh, there is improvement in the overall working capital cycle so while you know lot has improved from where we were uh, still some more work needs to be done some of these old legacy receivables will take time between now and march 25 to kind of fully uh, clean them up and fully recover those uh, receivables and that those funds as they become available can be used to you know uh, pay off the debt uh, which is out there and part of those funds can be used for increase working capital requirement because you know to maintain uh, this kind of a you know uh, north of 20 somewhere between 20 30% growth rate uh, you need additional working capital but as long as we, most of that growth comes from dealers then we do not need actually that much of working capital and that's why this can be used uh, to reduce the uh, debt and that's how we see it uh, going forward uh, in now moving beyond the jain irrigation main business of drip and the pipes and tissue culture uh, tissue culture the third part uh, which is comparatively smaller business but it is doing very well you know some of the banana plants we sell to the farmers Uh, you know booking has already been done up to all the our capacity till next may has been booked by farmers by paying advance because they are getting good value for the banana crop and therefore they want to invest and be sure that a good quality plants because remain available to them so that is going to help us and we need to increase some of the capacities there because those capacities would help us to significantly uh, capture the additional market uh going forward uh, or next uh, you know uh 3 to 4 years and uh, not only uh, you know banana plantation uh, banana plants but we are seeing more demand for papaya our potato seed business is growing so i think that overall division which i said last year was hardly 175 crores current year it was it is going to be 225 but in next few years we see in phase 1 uh that to double closer to 500 and over next 5 to 7 years for that to go to 1000 and that is one business which is significantly high bidder so and whenever we sell tissue culture plants we sell along with that drip irrigation to the farmers the the pipes and so on so it 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 pulls the rest of the business also along with it so that that, that is positive in terms of food business which we have which is through our subsidiary uh, this year mango prices were reasonably good uh, you know between july and september so we have been able to process good quantities of mangoes uh, our order level is good whatever we have produced has already been contracted to be has been sold but it needs to be shipped as per the customer requirement over next 9 to 12 months and that is the nature of that particular business and um, we are waiting to see how the in the last quarter main onion processing takes place and uh, as of now indications are that it would also be a normal season as things stand today uh, our overseas plastic sheet business has been doing well uh, you know we are reorganizing that business a little bit uh, because it is operating in us in northern ireland southern ireland and so on so some work is going on there 
but that business is also giving us actually our total capital employed in that business is fairly limited and uh, it is generating you know north of actually 25-30% of ROC in that business and despite the slowdown and all of that in Europe we have been able to do well uh, post-COVID uh, things have started falling in place again now so business is profitable and doing well so all in all I think um, everywhere we look into our businesses uh, you know things are doing well and we should continue to maintain uh, this level of execution and you know sometimes I meet investors and a uh, few other stakeholders and they ask me you know what is new you know or kya, what is different so actually I'm saying you know we need to do just far more of what we are doing today uh, still tomorrow uh, we have production capacity in pipe entry business and uh, demand for each of our segment uh, will remain robust uh, for short, medium, and long term. And we just need to go out and execute uh, rather than you know think a lot of new things. Few things we need to settle, which we are in the process of, uh, you know, as uh, as a part of general uh, structural change in the company, where you know you focus on uh, definitely positive cash flow apart from just the revenue and uh, earnings growth. So that's where we are. Um, and I think um, this is a good year for us up to now and we look forward to remainder of the year also still good and there are challenges I don't deny and there are market forces and market issues but um, I think we'll be able to manage those and still deliver on the numbers which we have talked about uh, at the start of the year. With that I would like to end my uh, you know, few words and um, I would request uh, the organizers to open the floor for the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Kalidas, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. So thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Anandji. So my thing is, we see a tremendous uh, potential in uh, things. I'm very much excited about our company, the potential of company. My request would be, uh, are we looking at any possibility of changing uh, like our marketing strategy? Because uh, we can see ourselves as a tech company, a great tech company. But uh, when we talk about this technology with the farmers, many of the farmers may not understand that. But I see, even I myself, though I work in IT, I myself uh, uh, come from a farmer's background. So when I uh, tell my father, my father will better understand. So are we uh, not changing our uh, strategy a little bit instead of like reaching out to, uh, along with reaching farmers? Uh, uh, can we also not do some marketing with these tech guys, uh, no? reaching out uh, uh, to them? and educating them, maybe a small show, because many of the uh, IT guys, they may even look at this kind of technology and doing farming. So that is my one question. Uh, that could be done maybe in front of the IT companies or even uh, at the apartment, because many of the apartments are looking like a roof garden wherein they may explore all kind of micro education. Yeah, that is one question. Uh, my, my second question is related to uh, the debt because many of the value unlocking uh, comes through uh, you know, uh, debt reduction. There are some many companies like Switzerland, uh, so on, so which has uh, you know, produced a lot of value unlocking when they reduced uh, debt. So, are we looking at any kind of uh, inorganic uh, debt reduction apart from paying up our uh, accruals and profit? Say something like you know rights issue or some other means to drastically you know or being aggressive on debt reduction. So those two are my questions. Uh, happy to hear from you, sir. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kalder. 
uh, in terms of you know marketing as you know generally speaking uh, we have reached out to only about less than 10% of the existing farmers right and while there are some farmers who do not understand new technology but every year we are servicing about 250000 new farmers right who are willing to take the risk with the new technology and understand the technology so that part is going and we would need to continue to stay on that path because as i said only about less than 9 to 10% of the physical area in the country is under efficient irrigation like drip and sprinkler while the rest is still flood and we need to do a lot of work to cover those farmers the other part the active people or the people who are in they want to grow plants uh, you know or fruits in their own apartments and things like that uh, in my mind that is a much smaller market and uh, we we actually our products we have the whole active requirement right in terms of the entire agriculture and the farmer part of it and lot of farmers are buying this actec even though we are not known quote as quote known as actec company uh, but i think we have the biggest actec startup in the country because uh, the the reason this company exists is the technology interventions we have brought to the farmers right we don't sell commodity products we sell only technological customized interventions which improve farmer productivity and prosperity both uh, by leaps and bounds and that's what company's mission and motto has been for since it uh, started in 1986 so that will continue this other part selling to the you know households and others uh, there we have now built kits etc and those are available on amazon for people to buy uh, we have not done active marketing there because we don't so you know as of now see it's worth spending that money but product line is available and we do sell every year still now but you know overall i sell 2000 crore worth of drip irrigation and it's about 10 crore rupees being sold through online uh, to various this kind of household customers so there is a big difference there um, and one will pick that up uh, maybe at a later date as things evolve uh, in terms of your second question on the debt uh, we do believe and we want to continually deleverage the company uh, on various parameters as you know last year the debt was close to 7000 it is now you know down by what almost 50% with whatever in organic transactions we have done plus the way we are running business now so every year you know we plan to significantly reduce the debt through uh, generation of free cash flows uh, out of the ebitda uh, in, in terms of anything in organic uh, you know it's speculative there's nothing on the drawing board right now so i would not like to comment on it thank you <laughs> Uh, sir, uh, one quick Mr. question. Sir, sir, what, what? I request you to join back the queue, please, as we have other participants waiting. You may join back for follow-up questions. Thank you. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, please restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We'll take a next question from the line of Pritesh Chera from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, it's quite commendable that uh, you have kept the balance sheet static and grown for the last six quarters. Uh, just a few uh, things that we wanted to check. One, this this whole receivable which is there on the balance sheet. Uh, what needs to be done from your side, or what is the process to you know get these receivables and cash? Uh, that's the first question. Yeah. Second question. so i can answer okay. okay second question is now considering the debt that you have which is at about 3500 crore plus number and you know if you look at whatever uh, the annualized half yearly ebitda or whichever 35% of the ebitda which you mentioned for half 65 second half then you are still running at a 4x plus 4x debt to ebitda what are the tools available to you in order to reduce this debt Okay. Uh, because your natural cash flow method or natural growth based method of reducing debt won't happen so what are the tools available to you to reduce the debt so these are my two questions yeah so on first question uh, good question uh, on the first question on the receivables uh, you know uh, almost about 50% of the receivables are linked to the government and linked to the project uh we expect to complete this project on milestone basis between now and you know every quarter few and others 
but I think definitely by March 25, 95% of projects would be completed and done with, and we would have received the money. So I think the only way uh, we can recover, recover that money is by completing the project, which also requires some of the infusion, right? You can't complete the milestones unless you do certain amount of work, which requires the funds to be put into that project before you can recover. And that's a tight cycle which we are maintaining because we don't want to compromise on the other hand our retail business, right? There you need some amount of inventory, etc., so that dealers are able to service customers in one or two days or three days. Uh, like that. So that is the way I think these receivables, you will see some reduction already by March 24, but by March 25, majority of these legacy receivables will go away and that cash will become available into the business. Uh, in terms of your second question, uh, which is uh, linked to EBITDA and overall debt. So based on the, you know, let's say, you know, current year, uh, the EBITDA is somewhere between 900 to 1,000. Uh, and the date is about three, three and a half, right? Uh, 3,500. So that takes you to about, uh, you know, three and a half times rather than four. Another thing, part of this date, you know, about seven to 800 crores, as you know, these are 0% NCDs, UN table in 2028. So actually, uh, it is not an interest bearing date, uh, one would say. So if you take, subtract that, then, you know, we are at uh, this, uh, closer to 2800 and part of that will get repaid between now and uh, next March uh, as well. So our target is actually on a net basis, not considering the 0% NCD, uh, to be closer to 2.5, uh, uh, you know, in next 12 months or so. And then, you know, bring it down further, uh, maybe to less than two uh, as we move towards uh, 25, March 25. So that those kind of aggressive uh, plans we have, and most of that is goes back to the uh, business portfolio and uh, the way working capital cycle is going to uh, work. So, you know, high debt is not something we want to continue, and that we have stated we have partly achieved good results by reducing it by 50%. Another reduction, I think, uh, through performance, uh, you will see uh, over next eight quarters or so. So it's a natural process Mr. of Jada, that production. I request you to join back the queue, please. Ma'am, I have just asked two questions and I am just clarifying on it. I have not even asked the third question. So we, uh, we request you to ask only two questions, please, as we have other participants waiting. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Chirak Shah from White Pine. Please go ahead. Mr. Chiraksha, please yeah, unmute your thanks line. For the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And the Congress for Gujarat of Numbers. So my first question is, uh, if you can just summarize the recent pledge transactions that we had, you know, there, uh, so what, and exactly what is the holding uh, of the promoter now? Uh, because there were pledge transactions, plus uh, there is receipt of money which has happened for against warrants. So what is the current holding? Uh, what is the current pledge? And if you can just explain, it would be helpful, sir. Uh, you know, I think current holding is around uh, on effective basis, I think uh, somewhere closer to 27%. And okay. out of that, about 15% was pledged. Uh, okay. I don't have these numbers to be honest uh, offhand on my head. Uh, but there has not been much change. It has moved from one party to another. Uh, okay. there were, earlier, there were multiple different parties that have come to one party. But as we have said, right, in next uh, uh, 18 months or so, we plan to significantly bring down the pledge by yes. monetizing some of the personal assets. That process is on, but you will see results, maybe some results by March and some uh, in FY25. So there is no reduction in your, uh, in your holding, effective holding, right? Sir? No, no, no. Yeah. We have maintained, if we have issued any preferential uh, warrants, etc. We have actually also taken uh, the warrant so that there is no reduction in our effective value. The so second question is on is on your uh, net working capital day, which is on site 22. So versus last year, there is a significant improvement. What is the way ahead? So is this the ideal number that you have achieved, or there is further scope? And how should we look at your working capital? 
uh, DSOs that you have highlighted on Strike 22. Yeah, across so, businesses, across individual businesses. Yes, yes. So there is a definite room for further improvement, especially on the retrieval side, right? Uh, because this retrievals continue to have a very large chunk of these legacy retrievals under the project. So as the project business come, you know, gets winding down and we recover all these old retrievals, and the new receivables and the new business we do would be more on a dealer basis where retrieval levels are very low, or DSOs are very low. So there would be a significant improvement, in fact, over the next eight quarters in the uh, AR. So, you know, this number has to further go down. Uh, in terms of the inventory, if you look at standalone business, inventory of the plastic is hardly 45 days. I think that will stay there. So small amount of improvement in inventory, but significant expectation for the reduction into account receivables. Another part, you know, when you work out the networking capital numbers, uh, what about the payables? Because of the financial restructuring we went through, etc., we have not been, you know, getting a lot of open credit from the supplier side. Um, I understand that situation. But as company has become more stable, credit rating is improving, our performance is improving, we are able to pay them back time. We expect more open credit to also happen over the next few quarters. So net working capital number, which is 213 days for India and 171 for the overall console business, uh, should significantly improve based on these two factors, reduction in receivable numbers as well as improvement in accounts payable. So both of these things evolve uh, over the next uh, eight quarters, as I said. And while I don't want to put a you know, specific number where we want to be, but uh, it would be far better than these numbers. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Darshil Zaveri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. Hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah. Please yeah. go ahead. Uh, yeah. So just uh, wanted to, the so first question, I just wanted to confirm that our growth rate of over 30% and you should be able to, in revenue terms, and we should be able to do around 1,000 crores for EBITDA. So that still stands there. I think in the EBITDA, we have always talked about 900 to 1,000, right? Everything goes well, you hit 1,000. It's, you know, because our businesses have impact of climate and seasonality and all of that. So sometimes there could be, but I think, let's say between 900 and 1,000, closer to 950 is uh, quite, because we already have done more than 400 and odd for the first six months and looking at 40-60%, uh, that looks good. In terms of revenue growth, uh, standalone India business has managed about 33% for the first half and that should be maintained uh, for the remainder as well. Uh, other businesses are you know, not growing at the same level. So overall console level numbers may not be closer to 30. They might be closer to 25-26, which is also in the first half. But second half comes with some additional support, right? So maybe we even hit the higher number. But just to be conservative, uh, for the overall console company, 25% uh, looks as a good number. And um, uh, for the EBITDA, I think that growth which we're having about 40% looks good. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Sir. And just sir, wanted to be able to, you know, understand our finance cost a bit better, sir. I think we have around uh, 3,600 crores of debt currently. Uh, so, uh, how will a finance cost be maybe, you know, H2 and FY25? Because currently it's around at a rate of 100 CR, which is, to be honest, it will become so that will be a higher than 10%. So, right. But we also have NCBs which are at zero percent basically so just wanted to understand the flow of finance cost how would we you know be able to model for it uh yeah so, so that's i just wanted to you know reconcile that figure how should we understand the flows of finance cost yeah that you know i can't give a detailed granular answer but maybe you know our team can work that out separately but two larger points right part of the debt as you know is zero percent so there is no finance cost to it but current finance cost, which is displayed, uh, covers also the reversal mechanism on the 0% NCD. Because, you know, under the accounting treatment, we have taken the gain. And as we either repay NCDs, as we come closer to the date, time value, we need to add that back. So it is not actually cash outflow, 
but it does hit under the finance cost to the PNL on an average about 17, 18 crores a quarter. So that's not the real finance cost. So for the first half, you can, you know, whatever is the finance cost you see, you can reduce it by about close to 30 to 33 crores. Uh, and that is the real finance cost. And for the whole year, it would be closer to about 65, 70 crores would be less than what you would see actually on the books on a real basis. Uh, if I really look at operating uh, interest costs for the standalone business, uh, our effective interest cost is up, including finance charges, etc., is about 55 crores a quarter. And uh, we have additional uh, finance costs of about uh, 100 crores coming from the food business annually, and there also you know, we are trying to see how it can be reduced. And then there is some additional finance cost from the overseas plastic business. So all in all, uh, you know it's a little bit complex uh, scenario in terms of, but I think our team can explain it better. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Sir, I'm trying to understand our operating cash flow has been flat on a YOI basis, even though our revenues and margins have improved on a consolidated basis. So when can we see these uh, improved revenues and margins going to our uh, operating cash flow? I think, Madhur, you are saying by March, uh, you know, in the second half, you would see there, that there is significant uh, improvement in uh, operating profits. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you look at operating profits uh, before, uh, you know, working capital, uh, last year, same period, this was 198 crore, current year it is 289 crore. So there is actual significant improvement before working capital changes. Uh, but then, uh, post working capital changes, it is, as you said, uh, it is almost uh, same as it was earlier. But by March, you will see significant changes. Uh, sir, I was uh, referring to the consolidated uh, working yeah. capital. Yeah, yeah, sir. Okay, uh, sir, my second question was, sir, what will be our capacity utilization in various segments, pipes and uh, agri, uh, high-tech agri uh, segments? I think, uh, depending on the, you know, we have different, different multiple product lines. Uh, capacity utilization is between 50 and 70 percent. Thank you. We'll move on to our next question from the line of Ravi Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Arizan, I think uh, it's good turnaround. Uh, we've been, some of us have been invested for the last five years, and we've seen the up and down. I think both on the financial engineering side and operation side, uh, great work. Um, my first question is uh, relating to the food business, right? I think while on the MIS, uh, Jain Irrigation is known as number one in India, uh, what is the vision for the food business? Uh, my sense is it's a slightly sub-critical uh, mass at this stage. And because of all the financial restructuring and all, some of the management regulation was focused on other. What is the way forward for the food business? That's the only question I have. Yeah, sure. So, you know, food business also during the restructuring time and due to the COVID, and the fact that main company was not doing well, it affected the food business as well. And, you know, I think in 21, we lost almost 100 crore. Uh, so there's a huge loss in that business. That has been turned around, right? Uh, we are expecting uh, current year, this is FY24, uh, food business to generate an EBITDA, you know, somewhere between 240 and 250 crores. We already did, uh, you know, good amount already in the first half. So uh, next year, FI25, we see another 20% growth uh, further uh, on those numbers. Uh, and about half of this EBITDA is coming from uh, our, uh, what I call, uh, domestic business in India, including exports. And half of the EBITDA is actually coming from our OLT subsidies in uh, Europe and uh, USA. So 
even and as you know those markets have been really in turmoil and difficulty but there we have been able to improve our earnings so overall and this most of the learning about 240 crore ebitda this year is primarily coming from uh, fruit processing again mostly mangoes and some banana pomegranates and papaya etc and uh, onion and uh, garlic part and but as we have to build some capacity for spices etc which we are not really you know it has not taken off i would say so in next two to three years uh, i think that should do very well and it's a big and growing market on uh, the spices so overall i feel that um, food business uh, is another going to be high growth business uh where uh, our ebitda is also coming closer to now going forward uh, maybe you know 12 13% we are already hitting this year i think we were at 12.8% uh, now eventually maybe we can add another you know percent percent and half uh, as we further you know better absorb the fixed cost and so and 20% plus growth rate uh, on the revenues uh you know higher level of evida and maintain minimum about this 12.8 uh looks good for the food as well and uh, and as i said right now this is limited to some fruits and couple of vegetables but we need to add spices we can add some more fruits so opportunity to uh, horizontally grow and also within the vertical uh, both uh, still exist uh, the the issue which we need to tackle there is working capital because of seasonality like in mangoes in about 75 days you process something and you sell through the year so you carry a lot of inventory it may not be much receivable but inventory so some of that business model part we are still working on that how do we manage further growth but without increasing uh, too much size of the balance sheet so we are having talks with our customers our suppliers the whole financing supply chain uh, to get some right solutions to those questions but growth opportunity is there business is profitable and doing very well and there are extra legs with which we can run uh, like as i said spices and some additional other food vegetables uh, if i may ask the second question uh, uh, as part of the revenue scheme i think uh, th- there was some kind of an arrangement that they would we will also be exporting some of the products to them how is that now it's almost like 6 months uh, since uh, uh, more, more than 6 months actually uh, has it started picking up uh, are uh, pro- uh, products being exported and uh, being sold through evil uh, yes it has started picking up i think first quarter april to june was really low but i think uh, in this quarter it has started picking up already we are starting getting more orders and uh, i think we would see a far more robust exports through rivulets uh, between in the second half uh, compared to the first half and next year would be definitely far far uh, you know i think next year will hit our target of trying to you know do more than 30 million dollars that kind of exports thank you we have a next question from the line of ankit bansal from av investments please go ahead uh hello sir hello hello how are you and you sir good to see the turnaround in the company but my main concern is sir first question my is about drip irrigation sir you are being in the drip irrigation from around 10 to 15 years it's been growing in the uh, india but we are not seeing a formidable increase in the market share of drip irrigation as you are a number one player as i am living in a delhi ncr region i am not hearing about any of the farmers from about drip irrigation sir how you are forecasting to make it to the india pan india level drip irrigation how you are seeing it as you are the number one player sales are not coming from from this kind of business this is my first question sir yeah so uh, i think you know Uh, drip irrigation in india farmers perceive this as something where if they are short you know where they are short of water they want to use drip as a technology because it helps them save the water or limited water they can still do the agriculture 
So DRIP has taken a lot of roots uh, in western and southern parts of India. In northern parts of India, a lot of areas of UP, Bihar, or you know, and Haryana, etc., are uh, you know being farms are being irrigated through the canals and the rivers. So they get perennial water 24 by 7, and a lot of governments provide free electricity, free water, and all of that. So those farmers don't want to invest into a water saving technology. But they don't realize that it's also going to improve their productivity and so on. So uh, slowly but surely, uh, we are growing our business in northern parts of India, uh, which you talked about. Uh, but I think it would be another two to three years where you start hearing about trees as a you know normal part of farming. Uh, you know, like in like in Maharashtra or Andhra or these areas, most of the farmers would know drip and are looking at drip as a right way of doing farming. But in northern area, a lot of our farmers, this is novelty. This they have not heard of. This is not something they are thinking of. I think that situation will change over the next two to three years. And we are making okay. uh, direct uh, efforts towards that as well. Okay, sir. My second question, sir, about the turnaround, uh, are we going to see gen irrigation in 10 years benefiting your loyal shareholders, those who are attached to the company from past 10 years, 12 years? And sir, what about rewarding them with the dividends constantly also? How can a shareholder trust gen irrigation now so that they can also be benefited? Yeah, I think that's an important question. Uh, you know, one... Uh, you know, benefits to the shareholders, of course, comes from the uh, whatever happens in the market and the share price. And there, I think things have been better than what they were in the past. And I hope the market will reward the consistent performance we are able to show to the market now. And that way, shareholders will, will benefit. In terms of the dividend, you know, as of now, uh, company's priority is to manage this growth uh, and bring down the debt, which, of course, results into as you, you know, reduce the leverage, equity value goes up and shareholders will get benefited there. And as soon as feasible, I think uh, we will start looking at dividend as well. In the past, we used to provide dividend. Uh, but during this period, we could not because of, uh, you know, the issues which we faced and the lo losses which were there in the company. But, you know, we as a company are committed to ensure that uh, shareholders uh, should remain happy shareholders and should, you know, they should get returns for the loyalty and commitment they have so and the best way is you know for me as a management is to to improve performance and that's what our right now focus is and i think everything else will fall in place and i'm really thankful to you or other shareholders who have been a patient shareholders with us we really uh, appreciate you and we'll do everything what we can to see that uh, you know you guys get the necessary benefits coming out of company's growth Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Sanjay Kohli from Goldstone Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, firstly, great work. Please continue with the good work. Um, company, it seems, is going, uh, growing from strength to strength. And uh, you know, we appreciate all the good work that management is doing. I have uh, a quick question on the uh, aging of the receivables. So uh, what portion of it is not due as on the balance sheet date? And uh, the second is more like a comment and, uh, you know, uh, sort of concern with uh, our partner, Rivellers, uh, they are in this uh, headquartered in the kibbutz of northern Israel. So I hope, you know, everyone, all our partners are well and, uh, you know, how they are, you must be monitoring the situation also on a day-to-day -day basis. So, uh, your uh, I'm sorry, I I couldn't hear your first question. Second question about... So first question is that, you know, on the receivables on the balance sheet date, there will be a portion of it which is not due. I just wanted that, uh, you know, if you can give a number on that. No, receivables. Uh, receivables not, you know, receive billed but not due. Basically, on, on current sales, the credit period which we've given out, but uh, they're not due. Receivables. Hmm. See, uh, 
see uh, that in case of receivables, a lot of receivables in the government, especially, let's say in the projects, uh, because those are milestone payments. So when you are invoicing, the uh, you know, the receivables get created in the books, right? Once you invoice, you pay GST and so on. Uh, but uh, they will become due only when actual work in the field uh, takes place, right? Post monsoon, whatever work needs to be done, whether they have to put underground, you need to build a pumping station, whatever happens. Then only they become due, and that process of actual doing things in the field could be six months. So there are receivables which are not due, at least for some period, which are linked to the government and the project. The second part is, in terms of our dealers or institutions, the receivables would become due, let's say, institutions for us. For example, if I'm supplying polythene pipe to contractors, then it would fall due after 90 days, right? Or they might give us a letter of credit, but it will fall due after 90 days. So there are those type of receivables. And uh, then there are some which are linked to the government business, which is not project, uh, where the government gives subsidy to the farmers or whatever else, and then uh, that process uh, takes some uh, time before you can uh, get it. So, so if you can just get a sense of, uh, so, uh, so the bulk of the receivables would be not due? Yeah, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You know, good part of our business now, the retail business which talk of to the farmers, uh, if you're billing and you're seeking them, you know, payment either in advance or against the delivery, right? So as soon as you get paid, it is no more a receivable. So what is receivable in the books is something which is going to come into the future. So most of the receivables you see in the books are not fallen due. What is fallen due, you would automatically get it or you already have on the books on the balance sheet date. Uh, second question on the reveal side, uh, with, you know, God's grace, uh, not a single uh, person uh, of our company, uh, which is there, has been hurt during ongoing uh, violence and the war there. And, uh, you know, all uh, the, the plants in the certain area where our manufacturing plants are there, uh, there has no, not been any direct impact of either missiles or any, any, any of that stuff. So all people are safe and plants are functioning. Uh, but of course, uh, there are limitations and you know, there are sirens and uh, things like that happen. It's an active uh, place uh, where it is happening. But uh, overall, uh, you know, considering the whole situation, uh, things are still, uh, has been quite good from day one. And, uh, you know, there is a professional management uh, which is there, which is looking after this. Uh, we are on the board of the company and we get you know, a constant updates on where things are, and as of now, things are under control. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Chirag Shah from White Pine. Please go ahead. Mr. Chirag Shah? Yeah. yeah, thanks for the opportunity once again. Sir, just a clarification on the earlier question actually I had on receivable. X of this project or AJ receivables, what is the normalized receivable cycle for the, the two businesses or the way you look at the businesses? Uh, if you can, so generally, what is the normal receivable or networking capital cycle, not the receivable the networking capital cycle? Uh, X of these AJ businesses, AJ uh, receivables are uh, that we have. So, you know, very typically, right, the, the retail business, what we call, uh, uh, Normalized receivable should be, you know, at 30 days, sometimes maybe 40, 45 days. The institutional business we have, where we sell to the contractors of companies like LNT or, or other infrastructure companies and so on, uh, those receivables are typically 90 days. Uh, in some states, we have to do preparation business where we are supplying to the farmer, but the orders are placed by the government because finance mechanism is controlled by the government. There, the receivables are typically, you know, nine months plus, uh, somewhere between nine months and 12 months. And the project receivables are, uh, you know, they have been legacy receivables as we complete or between now and March 25, that will get over. So in that context, the, you know, right now about 55, 60% of business is on 
you know, much lower level of receivables. And some of these projects, as well as the government business, is actually majority of the outstanding we have under the receivable. Uh, and that's how it is. Uh, so, a real cycle, and as you know, today, as I said, this business is 50, 60 percent. But you know, as or oh, next two, three years, as the project business totally goes down, and this business becomes 80 percent, you will see the receivable levels are significantly down from the current level. Point. And sir, networking capital, so inventory and payable would stay where they are. That is, so there is yes. there is no and much of all. Uh, covered that in earlier session, yeah, but yeah, yes, I yes. Think inventory would more or less stay where it is, uh, but payable should improve as companies' credibility in market. So NWC will improve by reduction in AR and by improvement in it. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Karti from Suyash Advisors. Please go ahead. Sir, good evening. A uh, couple of questions. Let me line them up so uh, I don't get cut. Uh, one is in terms of your uh, very rapid uh, retail sales. Uh, how are you able to monitor and ensure that the channel is not getting stuck and that uh, the momentum is uh, on the secondary sales side also equally good? That is one. Second is a clarification. So you talked about uh, typically first half being about one third of a beta. You know, if I do basic arithmetic, that would translate to 100 crore this year. Are you saying that this year you are being conservative or are this one third to third will still work? Thank you. No, one third, two thirds uh, has been uh, historical. Uh, sure. You know, if you really uh, go back uh, in the years. Uh, as of now, I think uh, we are more closer. Overall, you see the level of improvement in Nibira compared to the earlier period. So uh, now we are, you know, hitting more closer to uh, the revenue model, which is 40, 60, uh, which is there. Uh, so I, I don't think uh, this year, as I said, we spoke about some EBITDA numbers. Uh, the range is 900 to 1,000, and you know somewhere it may be in between. Uh, that's where we are looking at. Uh, you know that is something we feel uh, we trust that numbers we can definitely deliver. Uh, in terms of uh, the monitoring the retail sales, uh, uh, you know I think uh, it goes back to the policies which we have. Uh, you know, and interactions which we have with the dealers. So we are spending a lot of time with our dealer network. And uh, they are getting more enthused, and as a result, you see more and more orders coming, and without requiring us to actually uh, keep any outstandings with these guys. Uh, it's more they are looking for keep enough inventory so that, you know, we can deliver to the farmer in 24 hours or 48 hours. Because our brand is so strong, if Jane is available, farmer does not want to buy any, any other brand. But then my dealers must stock. And for that, we are working with the dealers, whether dealers can get some financing so that they can improve their stocking uh, you know, right. without any recourse to the company. So those things we are working on, it's a work in progress. But uh, directionally, I think it is moving quite well. Thank you very much. And uh, a Diwali greetings to the entire family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity again, sir. Sir, out of the 2000 crore order book that we have uh, currently, sir, what percentage would be government and the remaining? What, what would be the timeline to execute the remaining uh, order book? I think you know, most of the order book which we have, uh, you know. Uh, if you look at standalone India business, it's about uh, 800 crores. And uh, you know, if you look at console, it is about 2,000. So as you know, our food business works with a lot of uh, contracts and, uh, in hand. Uh, that's why you see in console business, orders are uh, you know, quite, quite high. Majority of the dealer business does not work with advanced orders because dealer places order gets you know, week supply in week and next week he will place another order. So we, we have hardly about 10, 15 days of retail sales as orders in hand. So most of the standalone order book position, which is on page 29 of our investor presentation, you see, uh, are linked to the uh, government, uh, which are there in India business, and some institutional or the PE5 business. In console business, uh, addition you see is mostly related to food, where whether mangoes or onions, are mostly sold through annual contracts. So those are the orders in here. 
Okay, so uh, so the government business will get executed by uh, March 25, right? March 25, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir, and happy day, Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We have our next question from the line of Rikin Ramesh Gopani from Capri Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity. The so first question I would like to understand a little better on this receivables monetization that are currently outstanding from the government. Uh, you said that, uh, you know, over the next two years uh, or by March 2025, you will be able to monetize bulk of it. Uh, if you could outline one, uh, what is the size of such uh, receivables that you expect to receive? Uh, second, uh, you know, what is the kind of investment or uh, you know uh, you know what activity does it require to be done from your end for this to sort of reach closure um, and and uh, you know uh, what will be the trajectory will it sort of mean every quarter you will receive x amount if you could explain that a little better it would be helpful it could be lumpy it would not be quarterly uh, depends as i said on the milestones and the project gets completed when the government does inspection of the completion which has been done and then they release the funds and so on and that's also a process so uh, majority of this is going to be you know rear-ended as we get closer to march 25 but some will come as i said march 24 already and before september uh, 24 etc uh, in terms of what we need to do uh, it, you know we don't have to invest new capex but it is more working capital you know, we need to buy some stuff, which is, let's say, we are outsourcing. We need to spend money on the labor, et cetera, digging, trenching, uh, things we need to do. And also produce and supply our own material, pipes, fittings, all, all what goes into the project. So uh, that's an investment into working capital and investment into labor, which we need to do uh, to get the milestones completed. And then do the process of follow-up with the government, documentation, measurement, uh, analysis, testing, and so on. In terms of the total amount uh, you asked, I think the project-related receivables are approximately around 900 crores. And uh, hopefully, as I said, between months, majority of those, significant majority of those, uh, should be done between now and March 20. Got it. Uh, thank you, sir, for that clarity. Uh, the second and last question is uh, to get some uh, clarity and, and uh, uh, views on uh, your uh, plans with regards to Rivulis. Uh, if you could share some insights in terms of how they are doing uh, uh, and, and, and what's the kind of trajectory in terms of top line or EBITDA that they uh, could have in the next one or two years. And uh, if at all there are any plans of monetization here, if you could outline that. I think, you know, we just closed the transaction in March, right, six months ago. Uh, uh, and, you know, so there is no question of any monetization at this stage or at this early stage. Uh, in terms of uh, their business, uh, th this has been a challenging time last few quarters. Uh, one has been this whole war in Israel, etc. On the other hand, generally speaking, high inflationary environment, high interest and high fertilizer costs to the global large farmers who are their customers, uh, that means the business has been uh, slow or, you know, the growth has been challenged. But overall, you know, combined company between what we were doing and what they were doing, combined company has very good product lines uh, that has gone through the merger. And, you know, merger with about, I think there were about 37 manufacturing sites and we, we are closing some down, you know, etc. And there were about three and a half, four thousand 4,000 people some of them have left, some of them are continuing. So we have gone through a massive merger, plus this uh, changes in the environment, apart from what happened in Israel specifically. So, but uh, next year, and that company was to calendar year, uh, they are looking at a you know strong uh, 24, and even current quarter, uh, you know, October to December, I think, uh, they are expecting to be a, a good, uh, strong quarter. So. Last two quarters have been uh, challenging because of the various reasons and the fact that we just came out of the merger. Uh, but things have been smoothened out and our, you know, we continued with this investment and as we structured this transaction, you know, it helped us to reduce our debt by three and a half thousand crores, as you know. But uh, was uh, based on a medium to long term view we took about the overall uh, global irrigation business and the opportunity. And uh, there is no change in uh, 
medium to long term uh, positive view which we took uh, when the decision was taken in this march uh, while in the short term they have faced some challenges but that that is i think for the entire industry there is another listed company in this space globally and their results are also uh, similar so but current quarter the october to december they are looking very positive thank you we have a next question from the line of ankit bansal from av investments please go ahead sir my just follow up question is that uh, are the can share shareholder ye soch sakta hai ki generation will not repeat this kind of loopholes that been that that the company had done in the past like this restructuring can we trust them wholly fully because as a investor I, we are invested in the company for a long period we want returns can you please assure us uh sir main ye bata sakta hu aapko in terms of assurance is that you know businesses go through ups and downs the reason we suffered was because of a large exposure to the government linked project now that was also at a given point of time the strategy which we took right of dealing with the government and so on it seemed the right strategy at that point of time but we have learned our lessons so you know going forward right because we are more focused on retail business we are more focused on lower working capital cycle we are more focused on staying within the current business line and you know improving our earning we are also focused on continuous delivery i think all of this together would mean that uh, the shareholders and other stakeholders as well should you know should get fully rewarded for their faith in to the company we as management you know in this entire process of last 4 or 5 years we've gone through very difficult period of time uh, our people working inside the company all associates they went through difficult time shareholders suffered everybody has suffered but all that was due to some genuine business mistakes which were made and where we could not control environment like the government the body uh, you know they don't pay you can't charge them interest and so on we have learned those lessons and now with more focus on cash and carry business those problems which will never come back but overall as a management you know you know i am in business since 1986 personally my father started this in 1963 gen irrigation listed company was started in 86 and we got listed in 1988 uh, we have always been very transparent very open about what we do how we do and we are very much focused on creating business for you know medium to long term and to ensure everybody does get benefited by our activities and the business uh, we have no other agenda and company suffered that is true but it was not due to any loophole or due to anything else except the lack exposure to the government where things didn't work out and that's a lesson learned for life so that we won't repeat that i can definitely assure thank you okay sir okay thank you sir thank you very much thank you we'll take a last question from the line of kalidas an individual investor please go ahead yeah this is something like uh, my uh, follow up question to my earlier question so why, why not be uh, uh, do uh, uh, like branding uh, i mean uh, do some marketing because they are start uh, like you know we uh, we don't spend uh, we are not interested in spending on marketing but uh, no uh, why not at least spend some uh, thing because even it companies spend uh, the uh, budget on uh, no marketing so why not sir no no we do spend money on marketing it is not that we are not but that you don't see our marketing goes to focus on customers who are farmers so we do wall paintings in villages for example or behind the buses uh, etc etc we are giving more discounts to the dealers uh, there are lots of schemes we run so that the farmers uh, do get enthused and inspired to invest and in buying uh, in our technology products so that way we do do marketing spend but it is not done in a urban areas it is not done visible through lot of tvcs that's not where mm-hmm. our customers are uh, we are focused mm-hmm. on our customers in rural areas that's where we do spend lot of time okay but, but why not that for the tvc because even all the rural uh, farmers even sit at the tv 
So why not at least do uh, some kind of artificial, not a very aggressive uh, team commercial, but at least to boost the brand? Because we are the largest company, and uh, no, uh, but I don't see somehow like you know uh, uh, things are not felt the same way because we are somehow uh, like you know very uh, high level agri tech company, but the image in the market is not uh, reflecting the same. So why not we do a, a TV commercial at least just to you know initial period? Just to boost that image. Ah, uh, we'll think about it, sir. We'll think about it. Okay. Okay, Thank sir. Okay. Thank. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And a happy Diwali to all. Thank you. Happy Diwali to everybody. Thank you. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So, what do you, sir? Ah, uh, no. Thank you. I think that was a very interesting conversation. Uh, very good questions. Ah, uh, and you know, as I said. uh you know we want to stay the course right we are very focused on objectives we have and the goals we have which is uh, grow the business uh, reduce working cycle deliverage the company and create more value for all stakeholders especially shareholders so that's where our focus is uh, business is challenging outside environment is volatile there's a lot of competition market so that means uh, you know a lot of hard work cut for us uh, the management and all the people working inside the company but uh, i believe i believe into our you know inner strength as a company uh, we have a renewed focus and uh, you know in market the farmers the customers are really loving the fact that you know jain is able to provide product quickly because our quality was always known and that feedback mechanism with the farmers and the dealers is really doing wonders and allowing us to post this kind of results so we'll stay focused on that and we look forward to your continued support and wishing everybody happy deepavali and happy festivities thank you again thank you sir on behalf of jain irrigation systems limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may not disconnect your lines